Hey guys, and welcome back to The Gerbil Vine. Thank you all so much for being here, for subscribing, and for your continuous support with every video we put out. We really appreciate each and every one of you who like, comment, subscribe, and take in all of the information that we are putting out here on our channel. Today's video is a subscriber requested topic, and one that I am actually very excited to make. For today's video, we will be focusing on how to clean and forage natural items for gerbils. The outdoor world can be a really great place to find natural toys and enrichment items for your gerbils. However, please remember that not everything outside is safe and some items can actually be extremely harmful to your gerbil if you don't know what to look for or what to avoid. Before we get started on today's video, please hit that like and subscribe button so that you never miss our uploads. Foraging for natural items can either be a really fun or a really scary time. It is definitely a learning experience, so let's begin with the items that you should be avoiding. It can be extremely difficult to identify different types of wood, particularly if you are collecting like small sticks from a park. You really may have no idea what type of wood it is or if it is in fact safe for your gerbils. If you are unsure, it's best to leave the items alone. In public parks or forests, you should never cut down a healthy tree in order to obtain chewing materials for your for your gerbils. You should also make a note to avoid any type of wood that has moss or fungus growing on it. A fun fact is that trees will actually drop branches or leaves that are infected, so just because you see some sticks laying on the ground doesn't necessarily mean that they're safe. Something else you should be aware of is infected trees and sometimes um, the city or private companies will go around and like spray paint or mark the trees so that you know which ones are in fact um, no good. Uh, so that would be another thing to look out for. You definitely don't want to collect any wood from any of those types of trees. Another thing to consider is that city-owned parks are not private property, and the city will usually have a contracted lawn care company come out to spray and treat the area with chemicals, which is definitely not safe for your gerbils. Sometimes they will um, have signs up, at least where I live in Ontario, Canada, saying that um, the area has been sprayed, and then with the chemical that they use to spray the area with, so this might seem totally random to you guys, but another thing that you should be avoiding when you are out and about foraging for natural items for your gerbils would be acorns. This is something that I was unaware of and I figured, hey, the frisky neighborhood squirrels love them so much, maybe my gerbils would love them too. Luckily, I knew a lady who had an oak tree in her backyard, and the tree had just dropped a bunch of beautiful acorns. So I went ahead and collected them, boiled them, and as I was leaving them out to dry, the strangest thing happened. They started to move and shake, and all these disgusting little white squishy maggot things came out of them. Or so I thought. Turns out, they were actually acorn weevils. How they end up in the acorns is actually quite cool. So a mother beetle will actually pierce a hole into the acorn and deposit her larva into the acorn, um, in which case the baby weevils will eat the contents of the acorn and then grow. And when they're ready, they eat their way out of the shell, creating a tiny little hole. It's so small, the size of a pin, and it's truly hard to believe that this big squishy thing ended up coming out of that small little acorn hole. What's also interesting is that the tree, being as smart as it is, recognizes that something is wrong with the acorn that it's growing and it drops the acorn from the tree, which is how they end up on the ground. So literally the tree was rejecting the acorns and I just came along and scooped them up like they were gold. I have no idea how the weevils survived being boiled. I really couldn't tell you. The acorn must have like some sort of super shell. But this is the reason that I advise you to avoid acorns. There really is no way of knowing if there is a weevil inside the acorn until it is too late. If you know that an area is clean or if you have someone with a tree in their backyard that is not treated with pesticides or chemicals, I think foraging there would be a really great option. You can look for small branches from safe trees such as oak, hazelnut, aspen, birch, elm, or willow to name a few. One of my personal favorite things to find would be pine cones. In Canada, we have an abundance of pine trees, so this is something that is an extremely cost-effective um, and reliable source for a toy. While pine bedding can be an unsafe option for your gerbils, pine cones are completely safe for them to use. I fully encourage all of you to go out and collect as many pine cones as you possibly can as your gerbils really will love them. 
Pine trees drop them constantly and you just want to make sure that you're avoiding any pine cones with any sort of gross filth on it such as bird excrement or even sap. Rocks are another great natural item that you can get for your gerbils in nature. Rough, natural, odd shaped rocks are likely what you will come across in nature. I haven't found there to be too many safety issues with foraging natural rocks, but you do want to make sure they are in fact rocks. In the park where I live, some people think it's quite fun to dump all of their um, broken up concrete or cement block pieces and I always avoid these things when I'm foraging for my gerbils. You don't know what chemicals they've been treated with or been mixed with or even from the setting in which they came from. So it's definitely better to be cautious and stick to actual rocks. Next we're going to go over my process of cleaning and sanitizing the items. Now no matter what the item is, whether it's bark or pine cones or rocks, my process of cleaning and sanitizing these natural items is the same for every object. What I do first is rinse the items. I spray them under my most pressurized setting with hot water for about 15 minutes. Um, in this case, we're using pine cones just to get off any initial dirt or debris from outside or any sort of small foreign bugs. Pine cones actually like to bunch up really tight when you water them. So after that, I place them out to dry. Once they fully dried, I freeze them for 48 hours. When you freeze items, you are not allowing any sort of microscopic organism to survive. Anything living on the pine cone should die with this step, but just in case it doesn't, after I freeze the items, I then boil them for another 20 minutes. After boiling is done, I then let the items air dry again so that they can open back up, and then I bake them in the oven at a low setting. I usually do it around 150 to 200 degrees Celsius for about 25 minutes. This process is something that I take very seriously, as I don't want to introduce any bacteria or harmful organisms into the gerbil's environment. Whether the item is tree logs, sticks, pine cones, or rocks, my process is the same for everything. I may be overkilling it, but I would feel absolutely terrible if I put an item in my gerbil tank without cleaning it and they got sick from it, which is the reason for my lengthy and over-the-top process. So with that, our video on cleaning and sanitizing natural forage items for your gerbil is complete. We hope that we have inspired you to get out there in the world and find some great natural items that you can put in your tank. It is extremely important to clean and sterilize all items before putting them in your gerbil tank as you really have no way of knowing which animals or bugs have called that item home before your gerbils. Safety should be a number one priority with gerbils. If there is one takeaway from this, it should be to avoid acorns. Squirrels are smarter than I am. Realize that the acorns are defective and on the ground and avoid them. We should all take a life lesson from squirrels, who, by the way, are my second favorite rodent. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, make sure that you like and subscribe so that you never miss our uploads. If you all feel like sharing, drop us a comment down below and let us know your process of cleaning and sanitizing items and what your gerbil's favorite natural forage item is. Thank you. Bye.